Hey guys, it's Amanda and I am back with another video in my extensive Copic marker series. I don't really have an official title for this series, it's just like a video where I break down everything I know and everything I think you should know about Copic markers. But that's too long to fit in the title, so here we go. <laughs> oh my god. If there was ever a video that I wish existed when I started buying Copic markers. This is it. The Copic marker dupes video. Now, no shade to Copic markers. 358 colors is a lot, you know, it's bound to happen. Some of them are gonna be similar. But like, some of these colors are exactly the same. Like. I order a lot of my art supplies online. I know that the colors on the screen aren't exactly accurate to what I'm gonna be receiving, but like, no shade Copic markers. I know you're a business, but like, I, I just feel a little bit cheated by the fact that I ended up buying colors that not only had one duplicate, but like two or three duplicate colors in the collection. And that's just the markers that I have. I don't even have all the Copic markers. I'm still missing over 150 markers. So that's what kind of grinds my gears about the whole thing is just that, you know, if I had known this when I was younger, I wouldn't have bought some of the colors that I own now. So we're gonna get into the Copic marker tea spilling dupe video in a moment, but just a quick reminder, if you haven't seen my Copic collection video or my Copic marker coding system video, I will put a link to them in the cards um, in this video and then I will also have them linked down below. So go check them out. There's gonna be a lot of videos in this series like I've mentioned. You guys have been giving me tons of suggestions and I'm so excited to be working on these videos. I feel like, um, why didn't I do this sooner? But without further ado, let's get into the dupes. What I hold here in my hand is proof that I have wasted a lot of money. First of all, before we dive into the dupes, let me just quickly mention how I discovered these dupes in my collection, and that was with the help of my handy dandy hex chart. I will leave a link in the description bar where you can purchase this. You can get it on digital download for $5.99. I highly recommend it. I customized mine by adding this little chart of grays. Really easy, but this is such a valuable resource to you, especially if you are just growing your collection because it's going to help you steer clear of colors that you don't really need and help you avoid wasting money on colors that you just don't need or maybe colors that you already have they're just called a different name so yeah this is how I discovered all the dupes in my collection and I'm so so happy that I have this now but I wish I'd had it sooner all right let's get started the first color dupe that I have for you is for BV01, although I really use BV31 the most out of all of these, and that's because I have a refill for BV31. So technically I have two dupes for BV31, and that is BV01 and V22. Honestly, I never use v V22 and BV01, and I wish I hadn't bought them. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but honestly, they're just so similar. I mean, maybe this one is a little bit more blue and this one's a little bit more gray, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. These are so, so close that I think you can save your money and really just get one of these colors and that would be more than enough for your collection. Next, we have BV04 and BV13. You can see BV04 is notably darker, but the thing is, you could just do two layers of BV13 and get this same effect. So I don't even really use these as a gradient because I feel like they're too similar to use as a gradient, so I would usually like a, a step darker than BV04, or I could just use BV13 multiple times and layer it up multiple, you know, multiple layers and get this same kind of effect. So these, I mean, it's at your own discretion. I tried not to include colors that were just similar. I tried to use colors that were only really, really almost exactly the same, but this is more one of those instances where these are similar. If you owned both, you could justify using both, but if you already have one of these colors, especially if you have BV13, I would not recommend going out and getting BV04 because I don't feel like you need it. Next, we have RV, RV04, RV06. 
You could also just replace this with like a pink highlighter and it would be the same thing. I never use these colors and I had bought them because the caps were, you know, fun and bright and appealing and then, you know, when I swatched them out, I was like, these are the exact same color. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know how often you use hot pink in your illustrations. I don't use it that often in mine and quite frankly, I feel like this was just a waste. It's one of those instances again where RV06 is maybe a hint darker, but if you have RV04, you can just layer that up and get this sort of same effect. So I wouldn't bother buying both. Next we have R27 and R29, and you can argue that the undertones for these are slightly different. This seems to be a little bit more of an orangey red, this a little bit more of a blue red, but honestly, they're both red, and they're both really, really close, and the undertone um, can be reflected a lot in the colors that you use around this. So even though this is a more orangey red, if you shaded it with blues and purples, it would look like a more blue-toned red. Same thing if you used oranges and yellows with this one, it would look less blue toned and more warm toned. So you just don't need both. And honestly, R29 isn't even darker than R27. So this was, to me, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick R27. All right, so next we have R22, R32, and RV42. Now you could probably tell that these would all be similar based on the fact that they all have the same brightness number, and if you don't know anything about the Copic Marker Coding System or about what brightness number means, check out my Copic Marker Coding System video. Again, it's in the cards and it's in the description bar down below. So these are all just like a basic peachy pink color. <laughs> I don't know why I have all of these, honestly, especially R22 and R32. These are so similar. And it's one of those instances where R22 and R32 are more similar and R32 and R42 are more similar. If you had R22 and R42, I could see those maybe being different enough that you could use them, you know, to shade like, you know, R22 to shade R RV42. But I don't know, you guys. To me, it's just like just get R32 and eliminate the need for both of these because you could just layer this one up if you needed it to be more saturated or you could just use it lightly if you wanted it to be more like this. You feel? All right, moving on. Now, these are some more peachy tones. These were a little bit more peachy pink. These are a lot more peachy. These are like the kinds of tones that I use to add blush and undertones to skin. So these are kind of like my go-tos. And by these, I mean mostly this one and this one. Yeah, I use these a lot. Um, these two are pretty much dupes for each other, uh, with this one being kind of in the middle of E02 and YR00. E93 is also really, really close to R02. I wish I had swatched those side by side, because in reality, I think R02, E02, and E93 are all pretty much dupes for each other, and then YR61 and YR00 are more dupes for each other. But honestly, like, even in the swatches, maybe they look more different, but once you're blending them with other colors, they all do the same thing, so maybe pick one or two of these, pick one of the YRs and then one of the Rs or Es, and you're set. <laughs> like, you don't need five markers, you know? And this is, I think, where Covert Markers has successfully capitalized on the market and knows that people will buy their product and knows that, you know, if the caps just look slightly different, you'll buy it anyway. So this is my video just trying to help you guys out, save you a little bit of money. You don't need all of these colors. Next, we have YR21 and Y21. Now these are two colors that are both loved by me. I've used Y21 for years and when I purchased YR21, I mean, it's more of the same which I love because like I said, I use this color all the time. This maybe only has a hint more orange in it, but when you put it down on paper and blend it with other colors, they look the same. So if I had to recommend one, I would just buy Y21 and I use this one more just because I have a refill for it. All right, Y04, Y06, there is no difference whatsoever. I'm not even gonna spend that long on this dupe just because it's like, you can see it for yourself. They're exactly the same. Moving on. Y38, YR04, and YR16. Now, I actually didn't know that Y38 was this close to YR04 when I bought it, and I actually didn't figure that out until I was preparing to do this video. It's maybe a little bit lighter, but not much. And YR04 and YR16, twins. 
identical twins. Like these may be fraternal twins, but these two are identical and you don't even need all of them. So YR04 is my favorite out of the three. And again, I kind of go for like the middle of the road scenarios in these cases because I can layer it up if I need it to be darker or I can use it with a lighter hand to get sort of a lighter wash. And to me, that's just the most versatile. YR23 and YR24. Again, YR24 is like the the ever slightest bit darker, but I prefer YR23 and I prefer to just build it gradually to the darkness that I need it to be rather than just having a pre-made marker for it. So I, I don't know why I have both. I never use both, <laughs> just buy one. YR09 and R08. So what's interesting about the YR family is there's a lot of versatility in it. As you can see, these are very golden, burnt kind of yellows. And this is like a straight up red. <laughs> so there's a lot of variety within that color range. And I didn't realize how close to the R family YR09 was, again, until I put them side by side. Now, R08 is very orangey as it is. I mean, its name is Vermilion, so. These two are just so, so close, um, and I actually don't really have a preference here. I mean, I guess it's up to you, but I don't think these are um, both colors that you need to have in your collection unless you're trying to collect them all. YR02 and YR65. See, this is another example of just how diverse the YR color family is because these are like pinky peachy again, which kind of brings me back to like these dupes here. I mean, it's just more of the same, guys. You just don't need them. Um, and that's really all I have to say about that. I mean, they're pretty colors. You just don't need both. I feel like I tend to reach for YR02 over YR65, but there's no particular reason for that. It's just like, maybe it's easier to find. I don't know. Because the caps on these colors do look very different. This one looks a lot more yellow. This one looks a lot more peach and more true to form. So that's kind of why. I okay. E31, E53, and Y28 and E43. Now these are sort of to, like, picture a little line in between these two because I'm focusing more on these two as dupes and these two as dupes. So I prefer E31 over E53 just because I feel like it's a little bit more neutral toned whereas this is a little bit more yellow and when I use it for skin tones I prefer a little bit more of a neutral look just because it offers more flexibility with the other colors that I use. So I prefer E31 over E53 but they're both nice. This is just a little bit more yellow but Again, once you blend it with all these other colors, they look exactly the same. Same goes for Y28 and E43. These are just so similar. And what I like about this dupe in particular is it's another example of dupes across color families. So while a lot of these dupes are within the same color family, you know, go figure, they'd be similar. This dupe is between two different color families and you might not exactly see that they're this similar just by looking at a regular Copic marker chart. So that's why I think this dupe in particular is really helpful. All right, guys, we have two more sheets of dupes. Again, this is kind of another instance where it's like these two are similar and these two are similar, but these two are also kind of similar, so that's why I put them in a row like this, but definitely BO2 and BG02. I mean, go figure, they're gonna be similar. Um, and BG45 and BG15. You just don't need both. I actually would probably prefer BG45 because again, it's just a little bit lighter and you could layer it up if I wanted to. BG13 and BG32. Another example, I'd probably go for BG32 because I could layer it up if I wanted. And really you guys, I prefer to do that because then I just have a little bit more control over how much dimension it gives me. So I would rather buy a lighter marker and then build it up to be darker when I need to rather than buying two markers that are virtually the same, only ones slightly darker. Because number one, that's going to save you money. And number two, rather than buying this marker, I could just buy a refill for this marker. That's smart shopping. Oh, this one's one of my favorites. Because you guys know that BG10 is my favorite Copic marker color of all time. And I found two color dupes for it. BG11, obviously very, very close. But 
I tend to use BG10 again for the same reason that I keep saying I can build it up if I want to and G00 is also basically exactly the same I mean do you guys even see a color difference because I don't honestly B21 and B41 they're both light blue even for B41 being a more desaturated blue these look so similar Oh my gosh, and I had been using B21 for years. I can't believe I bought B41. I didn't need it. All right, and this is another one where it's like two and two, obviously. B18 and B26, very similar. I wouldn't purchase both again if I could start all over. Um, I'd probably prefer B26. And E40 and W1. I use E40 a lot. I also use W1 a lot. And I didn't realize how similar they were until I put them side by side. And honestly, I'm going to say it. If I had to start over and build my collection again from scratch, I would probably only buy E40. Even though I love my warm grays, I feel like this just offers a little bit more of an organic tone. And that's kind of what I'm going for now in my artwork. And I feel like grays can just really dull down a picture, which sometimes that's what you want, but sometimes it's not. So I feel like at the end of the day, E40 offers the most flexibility, even though obviously they're very similar. All I'm saying is like you don't need both. All right, and then this one has been pointed out by other artists before, but C9, meaning cool gray nine, neutral gray nine, tonal gray nine, warm gray nine, they're all the same. Once you get to a point they, they're just dark and the undertones don't really come through so if you only have one of these tonal gray markers or one neutral gray marker you can mix it with other warm grays or cool grays or whatever you want you can totally mix and match especially once they get darker just because you honestly can't tell the difference and the same goes for black and special black or 100 and 110 I don't see what's so special about this do you like, it doesn't have glitter in it or, like, positive reinforcement. So what's so special about it? Like, they're both black. This is just marketing. This is marketing at its best. And also its worst. <laughs> All right guys, so this is our last round of dupes. I feel like I was actually supposed to do this page before the last one, but that's okay, whatever. We're not going back now. E39 and E99. Now the E90 color family is actually a pretty saturated color family as far as earth tones go, and it kind of leads me to believe that the earth tones follow a slightly different coating system than the rest of the color families, although for the most time, at least within the same saturation family, it kind of follows the same rules. So I couldn't find any information about a different coating system for the earth tones, and so I have no proof of that, um, but that's just my speculation. Anyway, these are really freaking similar. Don't buy both. YR07, YR68. They're both orange. Don't buy both. <laughs> Y08 and Y15. I have a refill for Y15, so I tend to use Y15 more, but honestly, there's just no difference. Like. <laughs> it's uncanny to me just how many dupes I had in my collection and I was not aware. Uh, YG07 and G14, obviously this does have a little bit more yellow in it and you can definitely see a slight difference, especially when it's on stark white paper and you're not blending with other colors. But I just want to keep reminding you guys to think about the fact that you're going to be using these markers with other markers and you're going to be blending and at the end of the day, this much of a difference is just not significant enough, at least to me, to recommend that young artists need both. I mean, yes, if you're going to collect all of them, collect them all, go for it. Be the very best, you know, but if you're building your collection based on necessity and you're trying to save a little bit of money, I would just say pick one of these. Uh, YG41 and G12. I would probably find myself reaching for G12 over G41 a little bit more just because I feel like, I don't know, this is like a little bit too pastel for me, um, and pastels are fine, pastels are beautiful, um, but I just find that having a little bit more of like a natural tone blends better with other markers. But again, these are just so similar, so I would probably go for this one. Alright, and this is the bottom of this page. 
G21 or G24, so similar. Just buy G21 and layer it up as you need it. Don't get G24. And G28 and G29, obviously, just <laughs> look exactly the same. Honestly, I've looked at these swatches and there's just, there's no difference. There's no difference. Just buy one. Buy whichever one. Doesn't matter. Flip a coin. Like, there's no difference. It does not matter which one of these you get. I mean, that's a lot of dupes, but uh, that's none of my business. Just kidding, guys. I'm not here to spill tea. This is lemonade. But lemonade runs with shade, and I am still a little shady about this. So, Hopefully you guys just don't repeat my mistakes and this video was helpful to you if you are still buying Copic markers and growing your collection. I've come too far. It's too late for me to turn back. I'm kind of just going to end up buying all 358 markers even though I don't need them, but please don't let that be you. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm rhyming too much. Oh my god. Okay. Well, anyway, that was it for the Copic Marker Dukes video. Hopefully, um, you guys found it helpful. And this is also by no means all of the dupes in the Copic Marker color collection. And that doesn't include dupes in other marker brands that are similar to these colors. So there's a lot of ground that obviously I didn't cover. If you have found a Copic Marker dupe in your own collection, leave it in the comments down below help a brother or a sister out we're all just trying to save some money here right all right so that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching thumbs it up if you liked it leave a comment down below if you have a suggestion for a future video and without further ado i will see you friday with my artsy fartsy friday video for the week i really am thirsty though oh my god i talk too much <laughs> uh.